Hey family, it's Pastor Carrie and welcome back. We are live for our 15 minute daily devotion. Listen, y'all make me so excited about Tuesdays. I look forward to being with you. I look forward to sharing with you and I look forward to hearing the testimonies of what the Lord has been doing uh, as a result of us spending this time together. Listen, you all know the drill on behalf of our pastor, um, our incredible pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant. We are so blessed to be able to have you with us today. Listen, if you've not liked this, if if you've not shared this, I want you to do that. And you all are so awesome with being so amazing, so positive in your comments. I want you to do that as well. I want to say thank you to all of you who have been emailing me, who have been just being such a blessing to me because of last week. And so I'm thrilled. I told you that we're in a series, yeah, where we're going to be talking about investing in yourself. I'm going to be investing in myself and you're going to be investing in yourself. Last week, when we had a chance to talk, I walked you through uh, what, really what it means at the onset of investing in ourselves. I talked to you a great bit last week about um, an investment being an asset. I talked to you about appreciation. Y'all remember? I hope you were taking some good notes. I talked to you about the fact that an asset is a resource and you are a resource. I've talked to you, I walked you through the fact that God is your initial investor and that the Father has invested in you. I talked to you about the fact that, listen, in order for you to move into the next dimension of what God is doing in your life, it's not about simply investing in other areas. We know that that is critically important. Many of us have mastered that, but there are so many of us who neglect ourselves because we are investing in other places. Can I tell you that it is possible to invest in other strong places and still invest in yourself? Last week, we talked about the fact that you are probably uncomfortable. You might even be disgruntled. Some of us are angry and frustrated because we have taken the time to invest in people in places that have yielded no return for us. And so we're walking our journey of life, pouring into spaces, giving ourselves to people, places, and things that really don't even have the capacity to hold us. What I told you last week is the reason why we do this is for three primary reasons. I told you that I'm going to, I talked about identity last week, and I'm going to open up talking to you about purpose this week. Last week, I told you that before we can even begin to have a conversation about investing in ourselves, that there are three areas that we've got to learn to invest in. And that first area is identity. If you do not know who you are, those of you who are with me last week, if you do not know who you are, which comes from your direct relationship with the Father, you can not even begin to know where you need to invest. You will continue to invest in the wrong places because you have not come into the knowledge of yourself in a way that allows you to be able to invest in the right people, places, and things based off of your identity. Identity is the thing that is going to drive you. Identity is the thing that is going to give you, help to give you wisdom about where to place your time, your energy, and and your effort. And so listen, I told you that I really wanted you to take some time to focus on the Lord speaking to you about your identity last week. If you did that, I want you to just put in the chat, Pastor Kerry, I've been praying about it. I've been meditating on it. And I believe that the Lord has begun to download things to many of you about your identity so that he can begin to walk you into this next topic that we're going to talk about today. So the second thing that I want us to talk about as it relates to investing in ourselves is our calling and our purpose. Somebody type in the chat, calling and my purpose. What is my purpose? Why am I here? Why am I here? Listen, Thomas Carlyle said the person without a purpose, yeah, is like a ship without a rudder. Listen, Mark Twain said the two most important days in, in your life are the day that you are born and then the day that you discover the reason why. Listen, Wayne Dyer said when you stay on purpose, hear this, and refuse to be discouraged by fear, he says, you align yourself with the infinite self in which all possibilities exist. Listen, Kathy Capriano said of Forbes.com, said your life purpose is one unifying thing. 
She said it's a, a theme or an idea that exemplifies your key goals in life. A theme that has been evident, hear this, from the beginning of your life. She says it is the specific way in which you engage with life that makes use of all that you are and draws on all of your unique experiences, your talents, your abilities, and interests in a way that helps you achieve your highest goals while being in service for others. Listen, this is what purpose is. I want you to begin to think about why am I here? What is my purpose? The challenge is, y'all, everybody wants to talk about purpose, but they want to talk about it without really understanding the language. Listen, Talking about purpose to a person who has not taken the time to understand identity is almost like speaking a foreign language. This is why I talked to you about identity first. This is why I told you to begin to pray and ask the Lord to give you revelation on your identity. Because when you began to when you began to think about purpose without knowing identity, it is like speaking a foreign language to you. It is like uh, it is like talking metamorphosis. It's like talking metaphysics on a doctoral level to a child. While it is a simple theory in concept, it can become something very complex. Why? Because identity is the lens through which one can comprehend their calling and their purpose. I'm going to say it again. Identity is the lens by which one can comprehend their calling and their purpose. Can I tell you, identity, hear this, is the framework that that creates the context for which purpose is to dwell and to thrive. Identity, write this down, is the incubator for your purpose and it is the passport to your purpose. Whenever you have a disconnect, a disconnect with purpose, I have to question whether or not you have created an environment that is conducive to purpose. What is the environment that is conducive to purpose? That environment is is an understanding of self, an understanding of identity, which is why I talked to you about this first. Oftentimes we're reading books on purpose, we're listening to people talk about purpose, but we've not yet invested any time in identity. So as you begin to invest in identity, you can then begin to invest in learning more, understanding more about your purpose. You've got to do it. Identity lays the framework. It lays lays the groundwork. It is the foundation whereby which you can begin now to entertain. Father, why am I here? Why did you create me? Why, wh wh what is my calling in the earth? Listen, it's very simple. We make purpose deep and complex, but can I tell you it's very simple. Listen, it is sim your calling or your purpose is simply the reason for which something is done or created. It is the reason for which something exists. What is the reason why you exist? Yeah. What is the reason why God has allowed you to have breath in your lungs? What is the reason why you have the activities of your limbs? What is the reason why the Father has waken you up every day? And even if there is a, an issue in your body, in your health, you are still alive, which means that there is still purpose for your life. Ask yourself, why am I here? What is my calling or my purpose? I told you last week, your identity isn't based on what your mother said, what your father said, what the church told you, what your job says, and neither is your calling and your purpose. This is also something that you have to get directly from the father. It is not the job that you might be working at. For some of you, it might be your life's purpose. But for many of you, that's not your purpose. You've got to have a clear understanding of what is my life's work. What is my career? What is my vocation? What is my life's motivation? What is the thing that will get me up in the morning? Not because I have to pay bills, not because I have a mortgage, not because I have children, not because I have a husband or a wife or parents to take care of, but what is the thing that stirs in my belly? Yeah. What is the thing that keeps me up late at night? The things that sometimes won't even let me rest while I'm driving down the street, I'm thinking about it. 
While I'm on my current job, I'm thinking about it. What is the thing that your life is motivated by? Typically, this is something that is going to be a strong inner pull that comes from the inside of you. And I believe that this is from the Holy Spirit. What is the thing that the Holy Spirit is constantly unctioning you to? Not the thing that you have enough money for, not the things that you always have enough experience for, but what is the thing in you that you know the Father is drawing you to, but you make every excuse, y'all heard me, you make every excuse not to participate in, not to do. You are always talking your way out of it. What is that thing? Can I tell you, when you're talking about purpose, when you're talking about your life's calling, it is always going to be connected to the creator. It is always going to be connected to God. So if you think that your life's purpose is anything outside of the father, you got to go back and look again. Now hear this for, for the super saints. This doesn't mean that that means that you work in church. Can I tell you that the Lord is vast? Can I tell you that he has people that move all throughout the earth in different space in different spheres? It can be in economics, it can be in education, it can be in arts and entertainment. For some of us, we are so limited because we believe that our calling and purpose only is for church. Your calling and purpose could very well be in church and the marketplace. It could very well be in education and entertainment. It could very well be in government. You've got to get with the Father so that that you know without limitation on him, what has he called me to do? Can I tell you, because it's connected to the Father, it will always be in a way, your purpose will always be in a way where God will receive glory and honor from what you are doing. How is the Father pleased with what your purpose is? How is the Father honored by what you do in the earth? How is the Father glorified? How is he exalted every time you put your hands to a thing? Are people blessed? Are lives expanded? I don't care what area you are in. How is God glorified? What do you love easily and naturally? Hear this. For some of us, I was telling a good friend of mine, I see y'all. For, uh, for some of us, uh, we have done what we had to do, that we've never really had a choice to do what we long to do, what we really love to do. For some of us, we have grown up in backgrounds that didn't cultivate what we naturally love, but we had to make decisions decisions to do what we had to do because that's how we survive. You've got to come out of survival mode when you are looking to grow and learn your purpose because survival mode will take your understanding of what you are designed to do. As a matter of fact, it will sabotage it. As a matter of fact, it will call you from it because you'll be constantly in a space of surviving that you will never get into a posture of really thriving in the purpose that God has created for you. So I want you to begin to write down, what do I easily do? What do I naturally do? What is that natural thing in me that I love to do? For some of you, I can already see you in here. You're saying, Pastor Carrie, but I know how to do multiple things. And that's fine. But what is the core thing that you are good at that creates the umbrella for everything else that God has purposed you for? I want you to begin to think about that. Listen, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1 and 11, it says, through our union with Christ, it says, we too have, have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. Before we were even born, he gave us our destiny. Yeah, that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. Listen, Ephesians 2 and 10 says, we have become his poetry. Yeah, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny that he has given to each of us, for we are joined to Christ, the anointed one. Even before we are born, there it goes again, that even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny. God planned in advance our purpose and the good works that we would fulfill to do it. So listen, your destiny and your purpose is your calling in the earth. It's not designed to be some type of maze. God gets no pleasure out of you being confused about what he is 
called you to do. As a matter of fact, it is his will and his desire that you know. The challenge is we've got to go through him to get identity. We've got to go through him to get purpose. And most of us keep kicking against God to get what we need to get from God. And so that means that there is a level of submission. I hear full information from the Father. And in order to get that, you've got to go before him saying, God, I think I know, but I really don't know. When I come before you, I know nothing. And if you don't download it to me, God, if you don't tell me who I am, if you don't tell me why I am created in the earth, I'm going to keep on taking jobs that you've not called me to. I'm going to keep on attaching myself to ministries that you've not called me to. I'm going to keep on attaching myself to relationships that are detrimental to me. I'm going to keep on going into deals that backfire or go into deals that you've not blessed because I refuse to humble myself before you to get the answer. And so in order for you to get on this calling, get on this purpose, get on the path to destiny so that there is a level of peace that you walk in, you've got to go through the Father to do it. Can I tell you the challenge with many of us is that we have a plan that we have designated for our own life. Can I tell you that my plan was never to pastor. My plan was never to, 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 to work in the church. I knew that I would serve in some type of way. My plan was to run for office. I thought that I would be the next secretary of state, the next congresswoman, the next senator. That's what I thought my plan was. And so I laid out my own path for what that should look like. But God has a way, Paul, or Saul rather, of interrupting your road when you are on a path that you think that you should be on. God will interrupt that road so that you are then on a path that he has called you to and that he has anointed you to. So I've come to tell you, newsflash, that your plan is faulty. So if everything you are doing is based off of a plan that you have established for yourself, you might as well throw that plan away. If it's not been submitted to God, if it has not been vetted by God, if it has not been breathed on by the Holy Spirit, I can already tell you that you are going in a direction that God has not designed. Listen, the Bible says many are the plans in a man's heart. It says, but the Lord's plan prevails. Listen, he says, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but that way ends in death. There's a way that you think you're supposed to go, but until you've gotten the green light from the Father, you are not going in the right direction. Listen, when you are basing your life off of your plan, hear me, I see y'all. When you're basing your life off of your plan, your plan is always going to be based on I, me, and my. How do I benefit? What's in it for me? What, what about my stuff? It's always going to be based off of I, me, and my. Those are your personal desires. These are things that are man-made. Can I tell you, this is a, a Luciferian spirit. Every time you are moving in I, me, and my, it is the spirit of Lucifer and not of your father. We know the story of Lucifer and why he was removed because his sole focus was on himself, not not what God designed him to do, even though that role was high, even though that role was blessed. But when we get tainted with our own self, our own desire, I got to come back and talk to you about desire. When we get tainted by our own desires, it will put us in a position where we abandon God, where we betray God, where we go against the Father, and, and we want to uh, trade places with him. It means that we try to become God in our own life. And you know the end of that story. You know what happened. And so listen, you've got to move from your plan, hear this, a man-made plan to a plan that is God's plan for your life. Can I tell you that when God has a plan for your life, it is sustainable. That is when you, that's that humility that I was talking about. That is when you move into a posture of not knowing it all, but you move into a space of father, not my will, but your will be done. You move into a space of God, whatever it is that you want from me, wherever you want me to go, whoever you want me to talk to, whatever you want me to leave, whatever you want me to cling to, I want to be able to do what you desire. Thy kingdom come. I want your will to be done in my life as you've already said it in heaven. You've got to establish right now, am I working my plan or am I 
I working the plan of the Father in my life? And what does that look like? Can I tell you, when you are working a plan, I hear you, Holy Spirit. When you are working the plan of God for your life, let me, let me give you this. It's not going to always be easy. It's not going to always be comfortable. And it's not going to be about you. Listen, just be, I'm, hear, hear me what I'm saying to you. Every, everything, your purpose will always be bigger than you. This is the very reason why you've got to invest in you because what you are getting ready to offer in the world is going to be much greater than you. You're going to have to invest so that you have the tools, so that you have the stamina. I keep hearing stamina in the spirit because for some of us, we've got to not just, not just in the, not just a spiritual stamina, but we also need a physical stamina for what the Lord is getting ready to call us to. For some of you, you know that the, that God has called you to the nations. That means that you're going to have to be on planes. For some of you, the Lord has called you. Listen, he's called you to so many spheres. You've got to be healthy in a way where you are able to accept the mandate on your life that is going to require you to even be in a different physical level. For many of you, you are physically good, but your spiritual tank is low. What God is trying to require of you is going to require more of you in the spirit. That might mean more prayer. That might mean more fasting. That might mean more studying. That might mean more prophetic exercise. Whatever that is, you've got to tap into that, begin to invest in yourself in those areas so that you are equipped for the call of God on your life. Listen, when you know that it is greater than you, there are some things that you have to begin to change about you. You've got to invest in yourself in a different way. When you begin to do that, you invest in the environments that you spend your time in, your conversations in a different way, the people attached to your life in a different way. All of those things began to change. Listen, the Bible says, but I have raised you up for this very purpose. Yeah, Lord, that I might show you my power and that my name, hallelujah, might be proclaimed in all of the earth. Don't you know that you are raised up to proclaim his name? Don't you know that you have been set in this time for such a time as this so that God can receive glory and honor for your life? Don't you know that it was for this very purpose, listen, that your mother almost died having you. It is for this very purpose, listen, that when they should have aborted you, they did not abort you. It was for this very purpose that you went through all of the hell that you had to go through. It is for, hallelujah, it is for this very purpose that they lied on you. Yeah, it is for this very purpose that they talked about you. It is for this very purpose that they judged you. Yeah, that your bank account is what it is that you were almost homeless, that you almost were foreclosed, that you went through everything you went through, that your health failed you. Yeah, that, 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 listen, that you, that you wish that you had more and didn't have it when you desired it. It was for this very purpose, for everything that you've gone through, that the Lord would begin to establish purpose in you so that you would be, that his, that his power would be shown and that his name, hallelujah, would be proclaimed in all of the earth. Listen, can I tell you as I wrap up that, that that purpose doesn't happen in a vacuum. I know that we live in a very microwave generation, listen, where we believe everything is quick. If you don't have, if you're not a multimillionaire by 30, if you're not a multimillionaire by 40, then you failed. If you don't have 17 million houses, if you don't have a husband, a wife, a dog, a car, and five kids that you failed, I've come to you today to expel that lie. You are exactly where the Father wants you to be. And the one thing that I love about the Holy Spirit is that there is no GPS system like it. There is a, there is a way in which God will begin to reroute you, glory to God, a, a way in which God will get you on the right path when you begin to submit to him, when you begin to say, Father, it is me. I need you to redirect my life. I'm going down a path, God, that you have not ordained for me. I need you to set my feet in a way where I can begin to walk, oh God, down the path that you have destined and created just for me. So I want you to know, even if you feel like you're not in the right space, tell the Lord, reroute me. I want somebody to just type right now, Father, reroute me so that I will be on the path that you have designed for me to be in. Listen, I want to give you some homework. I want you to start thinking about what do you love? What are you good at? What are you naturally good at? What is your passion? What is your mission? 
What is your God-given vision? Do you know the vision that the Father has given to you for your life? What is your current uh, profession? What is your vocation? What does the world need from you? Yeah. What does the world need from you? Because the truth is you have a built-in answer. You are the solution to a problem in the world. So what does the world need from you? And lastly, what can you be paid for? Yeah. What can you be paid for? These are the seven things that I want you to meditate on. I want you to think about them this week as you examine your calling and your purpose. Listen, the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28, so we are convinced, hallelujah, that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his design purpose. Listen, you are full of purpose. You are a walking purpose. You are a talking purpose. And I pray that as the Lord, as you begin to invest in yourself, that you would begin to invest in your purpose. Listen, so that you can move fearlessly, so that you can do everything that the Father has assigned you to do. Listen, I'm out of my time this week again, but I love y'all. I think that I've gone over, but come back next week. We're going to go into the third area next week as we begin to walk this out. So last week was identity, this week is purpose, and next week you gotta come back to find out what the third thing is. Listen, I love you, I do, I surely do. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal Bryan, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for tuning in. Keep telling me how this is blessing you. Keep telling me how it's challenging you and keep investing in yourself. It is the will of the Lord that you do. If you wanna sow right now, you can do that by using the prompts below. If you want to join right now, we want you here. We welcome you with open arms. You can also do that by using the prompts below. Listen, I'm praying for you this week. I'm cheering for you this week. Have an incredible, purpose-filled day.